So today, I just want to remind you that Article 1 is an all-day voting by Australian ballot until 7 o'clock this evening. All the elections from the floor today have been pre-warned, and a voice vote will have sufficed for that. So we'll start at the beginning. The legal voters of the town of Hyde Park are now hereby warned and notified to meet here today at 9 o'clock to transact business on the following. We're further warned to meet here at the school on March 3rd and vote on the following by Australian ballot, Article 1, and the town's school district officers. The polls open this morning at 8.30 and will continue, as I told you, until 7. So Article 2 deals with uh, the election of town officers from the floor today. And the first, uh, the first officer that's required, of course, is my position here as moderator. So I'll ask you if there's uh, any nominations from the floor for this position. I have, I have a great nomination, Paul okay. Metzger. Second. So noted. <laughs> any other nominees? Motions made. Nominations cease. The clerk cast one ballot on behalf of the nominee. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? You've re-elected me. Thank you. Your next uh, office to uh, consider is that for town agent for a term of one year. Do I have any... Nominations for that position. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I will nominate Ed French. Ed French name has been placed in nomination. And it's been seconded. Any other nominees? I'd accept the motion. Nomination cease. Motion made. The nomination ceased. The clerk has one ballot. Good French. Do I hear that seconded? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Cemetery commissioner for a term of five years. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I nominate Nikki Houston. Beg your pardon? Nikki <coughs> Nikki's name is in place, nomination. Are there any other nominees? <laughs> Thank you. Motion made, nomination ceased. Nikki Houston will succeed herself in office for a term of five years. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Find my page again. 
And the last is a library trustee for a term of five years. Yes. <laughs> Emily Dearborn's name has been placed in nomination to succeed herself in the office she previously held. Any other nominees? Thank you. Motion on the floor now to nomination cease, and the clerk cast one ballot for Emily Houston. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Emily's back in the fold. So now we're going to turn to Article 3, your booklet there, uh, to hear and act upon the reports of town officers and service agencies. At this point in time, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Susan, and she's got something to share with you today. If I come up there, stand I you can. I'm not very good at talking sitting down, so maybe that's a good reason to keep me seated. Um, today, and, and going into the reports and everything, and I think particularly Kim does a great job in your town report. Everything, everything you wanted to know, and a lot more than you probably cared about knowing, are, are in the reports, and reports on the various agencies that we give money to. Um, but this is just a little, we have a, a select board member who decided not to run again. And uh, we just wanted to say a couple of things to Dave that it's all right to say in public. Um, he's, uh, how long have you been on the board, Dave? 12 years. 12 years. Um, and through some pretty difficult times as well. Mm -hmm. And Dave has uh, given lots of time and energy to the select board to helping Hyde Park be the really terrific community and well-run community that it is. So we have a couple of little tokens of appreciation for him. Um, I, I do have to tell you, not the least of which is at the last select board meeting, I baked him a cake, and I do that about once every five or six years. So it just, it's a token of how much I really think of Dave. And, uh, but, and but I really made her take the first bite. <laughs> And see, we're all still here. Um, Dave, if you'd come up here a minute, please. We, we have first, it's a traditional town report with the golden seal. Thank you. Here's a little, uh, just a little token of our esteem. Thank you. And um, more importantly, Dave has a uh, real interest and commitment to the town roads. And if you don't believe that, you can just ask the road crew. So one of, the, uh, one of the things we decided to do after last Halloween and the, and the horrible flooding situations and the road situations that we had, and everybody, our crew was so good and we wanted to do a little something extra. So, uh, and we decided at the time it would also be a great little going away present for, uh, for Dave. So we had some hats made up. And uh, you'll need to come up and see it. And it's just the Hyde Park Highway, but more important is the little logo that we that we had put on it, and it's a guy leaning on a shovel. So uh, we thought we thought that way it might be really good for Dave, and we expect he will continue monitoring the roads in Hyde Park, even though he's not on the select board. But I, Dave, thank you very much for all your service. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Before we get into the articles, I want to make, uh, make you aware of the handout that most of you perhaps have received considering the, uh, the change in the, in the budgetary figures for the fire department. So I'll just make a note of that when we, uh, when we come to the when we act upon that particular article. So 
So, which one are we going to do first? Uh, we'll come up here and share with Paul. Um, I'm never sure with this how much information and how much time folks want to spend on reports. Uh, as I say, really, Kim does a terrific job. You going through it. I, if I have one page, if you have your reports, if you turn to page 22, um, I'd like you to see at the top of that page something that this town should be proud of, and it's our indebtedness, which is nothing. Um, there aren't a lot of towns in this state that can say that, and that comes from a lot of years of, uh, of good financial management. And, and we've got some trying to plan ahead for big equipment purchases that are coming up, like when you have to buy a grader or a new plow or when we need new fire trucks. And we keep trying to put money aside. We've got, looking, looking down the road 10 or 12 years, we're, um, we may end up needing to borrow some money someplace. But that's, I want to give Ron, our town administrator, who is out there, some great credit. Because he's very good at finding, he found a source of money for the recent fire truck that we split with Eden and, North, and with North Hyde Park that uh, <laughs> let us borrow the money at no interest, which seemed like that was not a bad way to borrow some money. Um, and if anybody else can find some of those, that would be great. I, I, again, maybe it's just as easy with the North Hyde Park Fire Department, as you say, it was just how some money was listed. It is no change in their budget. Are there specific parts that folks would like to talk about or you have some questions about, I think that might be the easiest way instead of making everybody go page through page. And, and I'd also point out that after town meeting and you find something in your report after that you want to talk about, you can always give one of us a call and we're happy to talk to you about things. We try to make these reports as transparent and as clear and as much information as possible to uh, to have you be informed, or later one of the articles that we're that we're going to talk about really is an educational thing. Um, we're not we're using it more as a way to tell people that there are options for change in the future. So, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> and if you don't, that's okay. Whoop! There's probably a button to. There it sounds. Just a second, technical assistance. Down at the base, is there a button? Oh. There you go, you got it. Is it on? Yep. No. So um, when do we ask questions about like the road budget? Now? Probably during the budget article, right? Yeah, during the budget article, okay. which is. I'll see if it uh, That's it, well, just second town officer or something. Uh, Where's the payment? No, why don't, go ahead and do it right now. Okay, well, so, um, can I take this out? Yeah, there you go. Um, I, just to show of hands, I wonder. Excuse me, yes. could you tell us who you are, please? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Elisa Clancy. Yep. Um, I'm not sure when, but about a year ago or more, uh, an ordinance was passed um, that makes the speed limit on our dirt roads 35 miles an hour. Uh, how many of you were aware of that? I mean, there's the right hand. And um, so my question for the highway budget is, um, it's only enforceable if there are speed limit signs. So we passed the ordinance that our dirt road speed limit is 35, but it's not enforceable until there's um, signs every, I think, half mile or something like that. So my question, my question, and I really appreciate the road crew and all they do for yeah, our dirt sure. roads, but the question is, uh, is there a plan for um, putting the speed limit signs on the roads? First, I don't think it's all dirt roads at 35 miles an hour. We have to, and I'd need to pull out the map to see where it is, because we went through certain areas. So it's not all dirt roads 35. Um, I know some signs went up. I'm trying. Uh, 
March. Is Mark here? No. This spring, no. They, this spring they posted some at 35. Brian's here. Yeah. Yeah, Brian. 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 Right. <laughs> there is, there, there you go, right. Um, again, I know some of the signs went up, but I obviously don't have a clear answer for you. At the time when, the, when it was passed, yep. I, I was there, and um, we were told that there would be a plan for implementing the um, signage because it was going to take, it was going to be expensive because signs, right. I don't know. Do it over cost. a couple of years, right. Yes, so I didn't see any increase in the sign budget, and um, even the part of Garfield Road that was started to be posted wasn't finished being posted. Okay. And um, I didn't see any increase in the budget for it, which I think the only reason it didn't happen was because it cost money. So um, I just wondered if there had been a plan and if we could make sure that we have money to, to do what we voted to do. Thank you very much. We can, it, and it does, and I'm looking at our road liaison to see if... So, I'll let her finish. Okay. Um, we will see. We move money around within budgets all the time, so being able to pay for the signs won't be an issue. Some, it's like our 911 signs that have been going on forever, but we're slowly but surely getting them up. But let me, that's a valid concern and constructive criticism. We will take it to heart and uh, get to it. See, that's what town meeting's all about. Roger, just when we're talking about enforcement of speed limits, it's more how much time and the sheriff can put in and what happens. <clears throat> no, I want to know which speed limit they're enforcing. Is it the ones that we approved or the ones that were there prior that are partially posted? It would be the ones that we approved and need to be posted well. believe that was this lady's point, so we'll get to work on the rest of the posting. Good? Okay, and if you have some questions later, we can, we can take things out of order and happy to address them. So who's Is there any of the town reports that are of interest to you that you that we need to review? Are there any service agencies here that wish to address their reports? There you, go. there you go. Jeff Beatty with the Hyde Park Youth Mentoring Program. And as always, we appreciate uh, the town of Hyde Park support. Um, just want to remind anybody here, or if you know anybody who might be interested in uh, volunteering for our mentoring program, uh, we'd love to have you. We've got 11 matches this year, and we, can, we, we always have more uh, kids in school that we would match if we had adult mentors for them. So um, if you have any interest or, again, know anybody who might, please contact me um, if you have more interest in learning about our program. My contact info and, and, and info on the program is on page 64 under the service agency reports. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello. <clears throat> I'm Julia Skonicki. I'm from the Lamoille Family Center. And this is Carrie Johnson. I'm on the board of the Lamoille Family Center. Um, and I, I just wanted to give a little explanation for our um, article number eight. Um, if you're not familiar with the Family Center, we serve over 4,000 people in Lamoille Valley every year. We're meeting families upstream. We're uh, committed to giving children an opportunity to thrive by addressing needs right in the moment. Um, we do that from the time that people start attending pediatric wellness visits with their infants through, um, throughout life. And uh, we had a little snafu with our request for an increase in that when we handed in all of our signatures, we found out that we had a couple repeats on the uh, petition. And so, um, funny enough, the next day, one of our board members came in with a full sheet of petition signatures that would have made us meet the requirement. So because of that, the select board was gracious enough to add an article asking for an increase. And just to explain that a little more, um, many of our contracts are underfunded by the state. We operate at a loss in terms of uh, the services that we provide very often. In the history that I've looked back in, we have never asked for an increase, even though we're providing the town and the Valley with services. And so we just ask you to please consider our request for an increase in appropriations to help us continue to fund the services that um, are available to children, youth, families, and child care providers in the area. And I would just add that um, the services that the Family Center provides are preventative services. And um, for anybody who knows anything about social services, you want to focus your efforts on prevention because um, once um, some of the um, effects of um, families and children not having their um, resource needs met early in life start to compound over time and then that becomes a lot more expensive for everyone. So um, it really is an investment in our community, it's an investment in our children and our young families and in the future of this town. Thank you. Hi, my name is Liz Courtney. I just wanted to second my support for the Lamoille Family Center. As a mom in this community, I've found it, the programs that you have is, are wonderful. It's given me a chance to get out into the community with a small child and meet other parents. And if I didn't have you guys, I don't think I'd have any friends. <laughs> so just a word of support. I don't want to bend over that far. Might not be able to get back up. Uh, my name is Roger Marku. I'm the sheriff uh, here in the uh, county, and uh, our department serves uh, Hyde Park, Johnson, and Woka as the primary law enforcement agency. And I just wanted to, I, I always come to Hyde Park because it's where I'm from, and uh, we have other deputies uh, in Johnson and in uh, uh, Elmore and in Woka at the moment. Um, just uh, a few little things. Uh, we've worked very hard with the select boards from all three towns. We meet uh, pretty much all during the summer. And this year, uh, we have uh, come to uh, an agreement where our funding is, is known to the town now for the next two years beyond this one. We had a 3% a increase to you, uh, uh, the taxpayers of Hyde Park this year. And which meant overall the budget uh, uh, went down by a half a percent, our general budget. So, and we've agreed with the town to, uh, that our increase for next year and the year after that are gonna be 3% as well. There is a uh, committee that is meeting made up of Susan uh, and, Roger. and Roger and, and members from uh, Johnson and Hyde Park to talk about the future of of law enforcement in the towns because it's expensive. And, uh, and I'm sort of caught in the middle where my people, I should have two people on a shift, it's that dangerous. Uh, 
uh, right now with, with the uh, drug situation, uh, which has not gotten any better. And, uh, but that's, you know, it, it's, it's hard for families to pay their taxes too, so I understand that. So they're actually uh, getting together and, and, and uh, discussing what the future of law enforcement is going to look like beyond those three years. Uh, maybe it'll be a different solution, maybe it'll be us. I don't know. I hope, I hope you know, it works out where we're going to stay. We've been here for over 40 years. So uh, everything with the shelter in the village of Hyde Park is pretty much stabilized. We, we have to go over there every once in a while, but I don't think that, uh, uh, I don't think that the folks right in the village are seeing uh, any tremendous impact with, with the uh, shelter, which is what we had hoped for and expected. Uh, otherwise, um, uh, you know, we, we spent some time, we've got a school resource officer down here, we spent some time, you know, down uh, here dealing with, uh, with issues, uh, but we have a good partnership with the, with the various schools and, and principals in the, in the uh, county. So, um, has anybody got any questions of me or the department? Okay, thank you very much for your time. Before we move, uh, move on, I want to make, uh, for the record here, uh, a notation about a dedication that we, we, we have for our report this year. Um, Don Slayton, your assistant clerk, uh, 30 plus years of public service, a little acknowledgement here and I'll read it. With great appreciation and acknowledgement, High Park recognizes Don Slayton for her years of public service following her recent retirement in late 2019. Many residents and taxpayers benefited from her welcoming smile and kind words when they visited the town offices to pay property taxes or their rent, as some have said, register their dog and obtain copies of marriage, death, and birth certificates. Everyone will surely miss her ability to remember stories and family occurrences from years past, even if they had not been to the town office for many years. Public service goes beyond processing papers, helping visitors with questions, and guiding residents through sometimes confusing state-required procedures and paperwork. A public servant also must bring the personal kindness and concern to each interaction with a smile, patience, and their best effort, all things that Don provided for over 30 years. We wish Don the very best in retirement new adventures. Perhaps today we could give her a bit of a hand in her absence. Job well done. Move on now. If there's no other reports from the service uh, agencies, Article Four. Shall the voters make the following statement of support? We, the citizens of High Park, strongly support the completion of the Moyle Valley Rail Trail. We urge the governor and legislature to jointly develop a plan that will ensure that the Moyle Valley Rail Trail is completed by the year 2025. So moved. Motion made to so move the article. And seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Moderator, yes, if, I, if I could, <laughs> just a minute. Uh, one of the, in the, Kim can tell me how many years ago it was, but there's a new um, regulation from the Secretary of State. And once something becomes an article, they're not allowed to put information out on the tables anymore. Okay. <laughs> so they have a whole nice sheet that was made up for us to give out, but it's not legal for them to put it out there. So, um, and again, this is obviously everybody across the state. The governor has uh, very generously in his budget put in some, uh, a good amount of money to help get this trail finished. So just so you know, they, they wanted to give you a lot of information, but ended up not being able to give out the sheet. We can take it and we can uh, post it on the, on the town website later. Thank you, Susan. Do we have a motion on the floor? Any, any discussion further on it? If not, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. And those opposed? You have adopted Article 4. Article 5, shall the voters approve $17,500 of the general fund balance 
to the North High Park Yon Valley Hall project. Motion made to so move the article and seconded. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alan Spencer, uh, currently uh, chairman of the committee charged with getting the former uh, Grange Hall in North Hyde Park uh, rehabilitated so that we can use it. Um, I'd like to introduce Liz Courtney. She is our uh, secretary. Uh, marketing, media, do-it-all type person. She lives just down the road from the Grange Hall. Um, in the last year, we have changed the name of the building to the Guy Hahn Valley Hall. And that's the same name that it was given when it was built 110 years ago. <coughs> and accordingly, we have called our group the Guy Hahn Valley Hall Committee. <clears throat> Excuse me. Last year, last year at this meeting, we asked for $50,000 to be appropriated from the town uh, surplus funds for the purpose of getting the roof replaced on the, great, on the hall. Uh, any of you that have driven by there have noticed that that has been done. Uh, it's a beautiful new shiny galvanized steel roof. It should last for a long, long time. The building is dry now, no leaks anywhere. Uh, the, uh, the contractor replaced uh, a tremendous amount of the boards on the roof while they uh, were placing on the steel so that uh, there are nothing, that, that roof will need nothing for many, many years. So now that the building is, is dry and protected from the elements, we have uh, some repairs that will need to be done. Um, nothing terribly, uh, uh, terribly expensive, um, but um, um, it's stuff that needs to be done in order to get that building uh, legally and safely ready for us to rent it out to the general public for different parties and venues and things. Liz will talk about that shortly. Uh, but those things that need to be done are stuff to bring it up to building and current codes, uh, electrical uh, building and uh, some sorts of things. We want to get it, there is a furnace in there. We have had it checked and it's a, it's a viable furnace. We just need to have it clean and have a gas tank installed and we'll be able to get some heat in that building. And along with that, uh, we have to, some of our repairs we need to do have to be done to keep the heat in. Uh, our plan is to install all new, new windows in the first floor, which is where our efforts are at this point. We have gotten a quote from Vermont Window World for $6,000 to put in all brand new vinyl double hung windows, which are uh, argon filled gas, um, uh, double pane glass with uh, grills and screens. And we'll have them the same color as what's there. Uh, it will very, it won't, it won't look, we don't want it to look any different than it does now. We just want it to be warm. Right now we've got several broken windows and all of them are, are loose in the sash and the wind blows in. If we're gonna heat the building and use it year round, we need to be able to keep the heat in and the cold out. Another thing that we need to do is to go into the basement and there used to be about a dozen windows and doors down there that have over the years have been taken out and some of them have been plugged up with boards and whatnot. We want to permanently seal those 
uh, and insulate them so that the basement will stay warmer. Uh, currently, uh, if water does get in there, it freezes, and we don't want that to happen because we'd like to be able to have the water on in the bathrooms up there year-round. So that's, that's, that's one of the things. Um, now, we have, we have applied. We have already applied for grants for some things. There are a lot of grants available. Some of them require matching funds from the town. Some do not. And uh, we are asking for some money this year from the town. However, we're hoping that in the past, uh, any rentals that we do will, will cover all the costs of maintenance, uh, heating, water, electricity, and such. Uh, a lot of the work that we'll do, we'll do ourselves, uh, manual labor. Uh, that's all it requires. It won't require money. So what we're asking for this year is $17,500. And hopefully another year we won't have to ask for anything or just a very little. Uh, Liz can explain to you what... Uh, we plan to do in, in the coming year. Um, uh, Liz. Thank you, Al. Um, yeah, we just wanted to get up here and speak for a few minutes because we were so grateful to you all last year for all your support when we came up here and asked for money to do the roof project because it was kind of a now or never moment. We either save the building, put a new roof on it, or we give up on this building and it falls into disrepair. And I'm just thrilled that uh, people came out in support and so much has happened over the past year. We just wanted to update you guys. Um, so for those of you who haven't met me, my name is Liz Courtney. I moved here three years ago. I bought a house in North Hyde Park Village and lived there with my husband and my three-year-old daughter. Um, I have a background in music and in event production and marketing and communication, so I was very drawn in by this opportunity to turn the old Grange Hall building into a community center. Um, it just didn't take much for me to fall in love with that old building. And on our committee, that's come together very organically of people that live mostly um, in the immediate neighborhood or right nearby. We have historians, we have handymen and women, um, we have musicians, we have singers, we have cookie bakers, we have grant writers, we have people whose families have lived in our town for ages, we have people who have migrated here more recently. Um, we are youngish, we are old, we are all volunteering our time because we're excited about creating a gathering space for everyone in our town and the surrounding community to enjoy. So it's not just about saving the building, it's about creating space for all of us. Um, if you have not yet been to the Gaihan Valley Hall, it has a first floor event space that holds at least 100 people, probably more. It has a stage at one end with a hand-painted curtain that is turning 100 years old this year. Um, it has a collection of vintage wooden folding chairs, which I think are very charming. Um, lots of folding tables, big tables for events. Back in the day, I think a lot of you folks may remember it was a popular venue for um, music and dances. Um, and we hope it will be again soon. The first floor also has two working toilets. It has running water, which is turned off for the winter, as Al mentioned. Um, it has up-to-code electricity and lighting and a heater that we just want to get fixed up and running. So we're asking for less money this year because we've made a lot of progress already, but with a few small investments, we can turn this into a useful space for everyone really, really soon. Um, there's more repairs that can be done upstairs, so there's still work to be done over the coming years, but we're going to do this slowly and in stages and in a way that makes sense for the community. And if we can get the first floor open this year and start having events there, our goal is for it to be um, a space that generates revenue and can pay for itself. Um, people have asked about parking. We have figured out parking arrangements at the post office, which is a couple doors north of the hall and we're in the process of getting the soil tested behind the adjacent lot to the buildings north with the idea of leasing that area for a parking lot as well. Um, since reopening the hall last summer, a task which required a lot of dusting and mopping 
We hosted two public events, which welcomed about 100 attendees into the building. We had a fall open house with live music and food and a history display. We had a holiday wreath lighting ceremony and a sing-along, which was in collaboration with the Hyde Park Community Circle. So that's been great bringing both villages together. Um, we'll be hosting a number of other public events this year to welcome people into the hall um, and continue raising funds for the ongoing revitalization. And um, we're going to be having a spaghetti supper in a few weeks at the North Hyde Park Eden Fire Station. So that'll be a fundraiser to help pay for the, uh, the cleaning of the, the heating system to get our, the heat up and running again soon. So we would like to know what kind of events you guys would like to see at the hall. How would you like to see the building used? We have a survey that is out in the lobby um, near the, the voting area. So please grab one, fill that out. You can hand it to me. You can put it in the envelope. You can also go to our Facebook page, which is Gaihan Valley Hall, and fill out the survey there. Um, so it's just an invitation to you all. We want this to be something for everyone. And we just felt we owed you a few words about why we're asking for money, because um, it's, it's really something we want to be useful for everybody. I've said enough. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, Liz and Alan. Susan. Uh, I just want to add a little select board perspective. And first of all, thank you so much, folks up in North Hyde Park, because we know um, a few people and a lot of volunteers and, and the hard work that it takes to get something organized. And it's terrific to see um, North Hyde Park starting to form a very active community up there. Hyde Park Village is, uh, is a few years ahead, but is doing really well, and, is, uh, and certainly with the addition of Fork and Gavel is a, uh, is a, is a much more active place. But to add, we have um, this group working with Ron because the organization, again, trying to look long term in what they're doing, they're in the process of applying for their uh, for their uh, 501c3 to be a nonprofit, which is important for a whole variety of reasons, but really helps with grants. They're also up in North Hyde Park working with the Regional Planning Commission, looking at overall plans, because obviously traffic coming through there, as you all know, is a real issue. Of have applied for one sidewalk grant and didn't get it, but that doesn't stop us. A lot of times you don't get your money the first time you ask for. So uh, they're doing lots of work, but they're not being cast out alone. Again, Ron, our, our town administrator, uh, meets with them regularly. They're working with the planning commission so that they're developing an overall plan, not just for that building, but for the whole North Hyde Park community up there. And we, uh, we thank you for all that hard work. Thank you. Any further discussion on the article? I did not show that. I uh, want to thank the community for their hard work and volunteer hours and kind of shepherding this project along. Uh, I know they spent a lot of time thinking about and improving for uh, preserving a really important piece of our community's history and making a, a really important change in North Hyde Park. And I want to encourage everyone to support the article. So we can do more to the building. Thank you. Any other comments? If not, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of appropriating $17,500 of the general fund balance to the North High Park Yehan Valley Hall project signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed? You have adopted Article 5. Article 6, shall the voters direct the select board to research the recent changes to state law and issue its findings and conclusions before January 2021 as to, should the voters authorize a legislative body to appoint the municipal clerk, subject to um, chapter 17, Vermont statutes annotated, 2651E and appoint the municipal treasurer. Similarly, 17 Vermont statutes annotated 
2651F. What's your pleasure? Motion's made to move the article accordingly. Seconded? Susan. Thank you. Um, um, I wanted to address this, and we decided to put the article in the warning, uh, even though we, to research something, we really take, because this is just looking for more information. We don't need to ask to look, we look for information all the time. But uh, this is potentially in town government in this state is a very major proposal that and an option that has been put on the table by the legislature. Um, and But I want to start first with to tell you what this is not and to make sure after we put it in, I thought, ooh, if people read this the wrong way. Um, this is not the select board saying that we are not happy with our town clerk. Kim does a terrific job as town clerk. Um, she's done a number of things that the state has recognized and said, ooh, that's a really good system. Working with Ron, we in this town have a terrific financial system so that you hear about towns where the town clerk has disappeared with a million dollars. Um, I think the only way anybody could get any money out of this town without everybody knowing about it would be if the entire office and the entire road crew and the select board and everybody else were involved in it. So we have, we have terrific systems built up. Uh, Kim also does a lot with, uh, with voting and she tried a new, what is mobile? Mobile polling. Mobile polling. She tried this year for a bit up at, uh, a bit uh, sterling, and I don't, I'm not sure how successful it was, but she's always looking for innovative ways and things to do to help people have better access to their town government, to have better access to voting. So this is, this is nothing about Kim. We are anticipating Kim remaining for a long time. But, but what has happened, and probably just in the years that Kim has been town clerk, and we can get into a different coffee debate as to how the world is changing and whether that's good or bad. But the, the job of town clerk uh, has really become a professional job. It, it's, not a, uh, it's not a simple, oh, record a few records, do a few things. It's the same way as most communities now are going to having a town administrator because the amount of work that is expected and the records, the changing use of technology, it, it's ongoing. So it isn't, they are no longer simple jobs. They really are professional jobs. So communities are looking forward to whenever their current town clerks leave, um, do you, does it just wanna be a popularity contest? you could end up with someone that's very well liked in town and very well respected and doesn't have any of the necessary professional skills to be a town clerk. Is it going to be time, and some communities are already doing this, become time when it's a position that is advertised just like you advertise for any professional position. So we thought in, uh, and again, as we say, we are, we are hoping and assuming that Kim's going to be here for some time, but but to begin looking at, as we have done with some restructuring in the town office, as we're doing with trying to make sure that we have uh, policies and procedures all very clearly laid out so that when people come after the select board, when there's another town clerk, that we have systems in place so there isn't any lost time. So as Hyde Park is making uh, really good advances and keeping up with a variety of things. A lot of the requirements from the state and the federal government, particularly around roads, around runoff, around stormwater, are very complex. The paperwork and everything and the financing that goes with them are very complex. We need to be able to have the right policies and procedures in place so that when the town or the federal government make money available, that we are able to take advantage of this. When they are making changes that impact the records and the variety of things that town clerks do, that we are able to take advantage of those. We have, you know, in the office, computers and technology. And probably like most of us, I'll, I'll, I'll borrow Paul's, but most of us probably don't use a quarter of the technology that's available on our cell phone, never mind what's available on our home computers. Um, Kim puts real efforts into, as Ron does, is the technology and the programs that we have really learning how to use them. 
So what you have in the Hyde Park town office now really are professional people uh, working in very professional ways to keep Hyde Park up to date and being able to take advantage of all the good things that are out there. It, so, so it really is, um, we just wanted to use this as an opportunity and felt that by putting it in as an article, even the folks that don't come to town meeting will see it and be aware of it. I'm not, um, I'm not expecting any gigantic changes, but figured taking the fall would be a good time working with Kim and with communities around us and some community people, if you're interested, to see what other towns are doing to come up with an idea and a process and what we might want to consider moving forward. Because if we decided that someplace down the line we wanted to make this change, we'd have to vote it at a town meeting, but then it's another, I think it's 30 or 60 days before it's implemented. So it would take some, we need to look to the future to see if we're even interested in this. And we may look at it and decide we aren't interested at all, and that's, that's perfectly okay too. But we just, again, felt it was an opportunity to begin to educate ourselves and the community about potential changes that are out there. Thank you. <clears throat> Jack? Good morning, everybody. I guess I got to get closer to the microphone so you can hear me okay. A longtime resident of Hyde Park, and I am opposed to Article 6, and I hope this body will vote no today, and I'll tell you why. Vermont has a long tradition and reputation with its town meetings to be the closest thing to pure democracy in the entire world. You all are here today because you believe in that democracy and learning what's going on and so forth, but most important, you come here to vote. You have the power. Passing Article 6 is asking us to consider that the select board appoint the town clerk and town treasurer Remember, the authorization to appoint also comes with the power to dismiss. That's what Article 6 is about. I don't want that, and I don't think you do either. A little history here. Years ago, before they had the Australian ballot, every year from the floor, they would nominate a town clerk and a town treasurer. And that was a little bit tricky because the town clerk and town treasurer might not have a job the next day. So, as indeed was mentioned here before, town clerks and town managers, town treasurers are professional people. They attend meetings. They're certified in a lot of different areas. Their continuity is a beneficial to the town and to them as well. They know they have some job security. So back in those days when that was, that was done, we had a chairman of the select board at the time. His name is Ken Harvey. And Ken said, you know, we vote, we vote for these two positions every year for one, one year, and it doesn't give the town the security of having a person there on a continuing basis, and it doesn't allow for the, for the security of that person to do that. So I almost remember for word verbatim what <coughs> Ken said at that vote a number of years ago, and I'm going to repeat it as best I can. He said, folks, we have always had hardworking, competent, and honest town clerks and town treasurers. And it seems to me that we ought to change how we vote for the town clerk and town treasurer for a three-year term to create that certainty. That is the way it happened. A number started to happen a number of years ago, and that's how it is today. 
that was a good change because it put the people in this meeting in charge of who you want to have as a town clerk and a town treasurer. Article 6 is not a good idea. Today, we are facing serious challenges to our democracy, and we are here at this town meeting, and we need to flex our collective muscles to vote no on Article 6. Basically, it's just, if we vote yes, this is the same thing as taking away your rights and responsibilities of voting for a town clerk and town treasury and relinquishing that power to the select board. You are all here today because you believe in the town meeting, you believe in democracy. We need to take and keep our local town democracy alive and well. We should not disenfranchise ourselves by relinquishing our responsibility to vote for the town clerk and town treasurer. Today, I'm asking this town meeting to vote hell no on Article 6 because it's giving away our rights to vote. Thank you. <laughs> In the back. I don't think I need the mic, but this is the first time in history I think it's Jack. <laughs> 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 I have been here for a long time. I've been here for a long time. And I think, if I remember correctly, we've only had maybe four or five town clerks since I've been here. This is one of the worst articles I think I've ever seen in a town court. I think there's 3,000 plus registered voters. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Uh, Russell just told me that if indeed the select board is going to appoint a town clerk, they don't have to come from the town. Right, Russ? Judy. They can't hear Judy, you, Judy. Judy. They can't hear you up back, yeah. dear. Yes, I want to back up what Jack just uh, said that Russ told him. We, uh, Russ and I had done some uh, looking online when, after we saw this article. Um, very opposed to it. Um, and online, you can go on the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and they have a little pamphlet on questions that have been asked in the past and about do we appoint or do we elect. We have found out that if you let the board appoint a town clerk, they can hire somebody from another town. My feeling is our town clerk is very, very special to our town. And I can't believe that I agree with Deanna. I'm from, I've been here for a long time. Our town clerks have stayed. They have been very dedicated. We have been terribly, terribly fortunate to have, and I don't mean terribly, but lucky, to have Kim. She has gone on and taken other courses. She has dedicated more than her 40 hours. Many times she has been dedicated while her husband was in the hospital. Um, I hate to see this happen to our town, a town where we work together and we care. And you can hire somebody from Crassberry, Burlington, and the next thing you know, they're gonna wanna do their work at home. So think about it. <laughs> Mr. Moderator? Yes. I'm Virginia Brooks, and um, I have a question because my understanding of this article is not that we are voting on whether to make appointments or elections, but whether we are going to ask the select board to research the question. Am I right in my understanding? 
you, you are correct in your understanding, and it's quite possible that in doing the homework, the select board will reach the same conclusion that you're all reaching, that it's not something that we want to do, but it is, it is a giant change that is being proposed in Vermont, and we felt as a board it's important to let people know that's happening. So this isn't, you aren't voting to, to give this away. All this is is saying let's research it and get a report back that again, I, I expect will confirm everything that you're saying. And it's also, I just as a note would say, um, it's worth the paper it's written on if Jack Anderson and, and uh, Ms. Judgekins agree on something for once. We've made some real progress here. <laughs> Yes, I do. There, there are towns all over the state, but there are towns in this county that are looking at it. And again, it's not that they're going to do it. It's the same thing we're doing. We're just looking at it. Thank you. The chair recognizes that gentleman over there. Hello. My name is Steve Morse. I live in Hyde Park since the early 70s. Um, I, too, uh, hope that we vote this article down. Um, yes, it is a research project. I think our select board and elected officials have enough to do to work on something productive than to work on something that we're all against to begin with. Um, I've heard uh, uh, from our select board today, uh, uh, they're very good at speaking out, both sides of the mouth, uh, saying what you want to hear. But I agree to, uh, with Jack that this is a bad thing, starting with bad precedent, and I think we should vote it down. Anybody else? I'll call them. Yes? Anything else? So, uh, Wendy Burrow, and my question is, I believe this law was enacted in 2017, so I'm wondering why now it's 2020. I can't hear what you're saying. I'm wondering why in 2020, when the law was enacted uh, to allow for this in 2017, why three years later, why now um, the board wants to take a look at this? And I agree that I... I feel it's really important that there be accountability and that there be a balance of power. I appreciate all the work that the board does, but I also appreciate what our town clerk has done, including researching lower costs for insurance, for employees, making sure we have an up-to-date uh, reporting system. I mean, she spends 60 hours a week, and I don't know if people know that or not, or if they just think, oh my God, you know, we have to pay our taxes to the town clerk. Uh, she provides great service for us, and I just, I'm just i really wondering about the timing of why this needs to be researched. Thank you. There being no further discussion, I'm going to call the question. Yep. I, well, there isn't. I mean, I don't, Wendy, I don't have any real answer. It's something that we've just heard about. Um, and said, well, you know, let's, let's see if folks want to check it out. That's all. Name is John Golader, spelled with an H. Um, question, if this is voted down, are we then directing the select board to not do research on this topic? I think right, that, that, right. I think that, that uh, it's part of the select board's job to keep their minds open to be looking at options whether they decide to do them or not. I think directing them to not look at these options is the wrong way to go. Therefore, I move that this article be tabled. 
We have a motion to table the article. Turn to the back. Sign the order. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's our page in May. Motion on the floor. It should be voted on. If you want to have a table, I think the table should be voted on by the full voice. That's correct. I haven't heard a second on the table. Do I hear a second? Second. And a second. Then I'll call the question on tabling. All those in favor of tabling say aye. Beg your pardon? You stop? No. That you're, going, you're not going to act on this article. The same as a negative article, that's what it amounts to. No. Unless you're going to table it to some future time to vote on it. That's not what, is, that's not what the motion reads. The motion says to table it, period. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of tabling signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? No. It's clear we're not going to table it. <laughs> we now have a motion on the floor to approve the article. And I'm calling the question. There's a motion on the floor to do that. I'm going to call it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed? It's clear to me that you voted in the negative and you're not adopting the article. <laughs> We're going to move on to Article 7. Shall the voters appropriate $2,000 to the Lamoille County Mental Health Services? Is there someone here to speak on that and make the motion accordingly? Motion's made to move the article. Do I hear that seconded? And seconded. Once again, is there anyone here to speak on that? John will speak on it. Hi. Uh my name is Frederick Luck. I didn't come prepared today to speak about that, but um, I am a mobile crisis clinician for Lamoille County Mental Health. Um, and um, I thought, you know, since I'm here, I might as well say something about it. Um, you know, Lamoille County Mental Health serves of all of Lamoille County. Um, and uh, I'll speak first, I guess, about what I do. Um, I probably should have acknowledged uh, Roger when he was up before. Uh, the crisis team works uh, collaboratively with law enforcement, uh, not just the sheriffs, but Morrisville Police, Stowe Police, uh, Hardwick sometimes, um, and uh, the state police. Uh, you know, working with cases with people with mental illness, sometimes there's uh, situations that involve people being suicidal, sometimes uh, people being homicidal. And uh, we get involved and we screen them and we get them the appropriate care that they need. Uh, we also, you know, work in general. We, we have a hotline 24-7. People can call Lamoille County Mental Health Mobile Crisis Team for support. It doesn't have to be a, a serious crisis if people, you know, are experiencing someone, a loved one who's having a mental health crisis. Um, they can call us for support and we can direct them uh, to where there's... Uh, you know, support for them. Um, and, um, you know, Lamoille County, it's a large agency. It serves a lot of people. Uh, we serve children in the schools through the Redwood program. They provide BIs uh, to kids in the schools who are struggling. Um, we have a CRT program. It's community <coughs> rehabilitation and treatment uh, for mental health folks to be able to live in the community and have the supports they need to be successful doing that. Um, you know, provides case management for housing, for health care, for uh, uh, whatever uh, mental health uh, services they need. Um, uh, 
Um, there's also developmental services at Lamoille County Mental Health for folks uh, developmentally disabled who live in our communities and uh, need support uh, in various ways. Um, and um, uh, yeah, uh, you know, we're, we're helping people in Lamoille County every day. And uh, it's not always easy, uh, but um, we're there for people when they need them. So. Uh, when they need us. So um, just thought I'd get up and say something since I was here. Yeah, if you have questions, I'm, yes. that's easier. Do you know if other towns are supporting? Yeah, I, I believe so, that, that the, the administration makes sure that you know other towns who are having town meetings today are also voting on supporting okay. Memorial County Mental Health. You know, you know, we receive money from the state to run we, the way that, and I, I really can't answer this, but uh, the way that billing is happening is changing. You know, the laws have changed, and the way that we bill for our hours has changed, um, and that's an adjustment that, that's being made. Um, I don't know all the details of that, but um, you know, all the support that we can get is helpful. We do, you know, fundraisers as an agency to help fund the agency. Um, you know, as well as being able to to bill insurance, um, you know, but um, yeah, uh, any support is helpful, I'm sure. Thank you. Pa Fred, uh, what's uh, your last name? We didn't get it for the Luck. record. Luck. G-L-U-C-K, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Paula, so, uh, I will say at this yep. time that that, uh, this is a first year appropriation for those funds from the Moyle County Mental Health. And that's why it appears as an article all by itself. It's my understanding that if you approve this, that it will appear next year collectively with the other service agencies for the same amount. Can I, can I say something? Yes. And, and, yep. Before the board agreed to put this on the warning article, Lamoille County Mental Health provided a, a, a document, an email, I can't remember, a report of some sort to the board um, of other towns who they have asked for money from and have supported them in the past. So. I'm not sure if Fred was 100% sure of who and who supported and how much, but the select board was aware that other towns in the county do support the agency. Thank you, Kim. So any other comments? Any questions? If not, I'll call a question. All those in favor of appropriating $2,000 to the Lamoille County Mental Health Services <coughs> signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed? You've adopted it, thank you. Article eight, shall the voters appropriate an additional sum of $1,500 to the Lamoille Family Center and Healthy Lamoille Valley, bringing their total annual appropriation to $3,000. Yeah, they discussed it earlier. Motion's made to approve. Second, do I hear that? Thank you. And who wants to speak on it? There, she did earlier. She came up earlier and spoke. Oh, that's what she did. Didn't yeah. she? Yeah. So if there's no other discussion on it, I'll call the question. All those in favor of appropriating an additional $1,500 signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed? You've adopted Article 8. Article 9. Shall the High Park Annual Town Meeting be held at the High Park Elementary School in future years. Motion to approve. To approve. Do I hear that seconded? Second. Further discussion? There's no auditorium. There's no seats. <coughs> took off the stage. So we have a question here about where it would be held at the school. Let me, I can, um, as you all remember, we used to have them in the gym. We would go back to having them in the gym again. Um, when we had them in the gym, we mostly didn't make use of the stage. Uh, where the stage used to be is now their, their new uh, kitchen. 
We've had um, a lot of the past few town meetings, at the end of the meeting, people have said we should go back to the elementary school. We looked at going back this year. Uh, there were some concerns from Kim being a, uh, being a primary year that there's gonna be a higher turnout of folks voting than a regular town meeting. Uh, so felt, and, a, and I will tell you a pragmatic decision is one of the things having the meeting here is the staff at the school helps clean up and set things up because getting everything set up for voting, taking it out is, uh, is a fair amount of volunteer work. And concerns that the practical concern if we go back to the elementary school, um, their staff isn't gonna be able to help set it up and clean up after, so will there be enough volunteers? On, only time will tell if we decide to make that move. But again, we just thought, and uh, Deanna was in at a meeting, and, and that because this has come up, we said, well, let's just put it in as an article and see what people would like us to do. I, I, gotta, I recognize a gentleman here. Bob? Yeah. Uh, where are all the cheers? At school, they're they're at school. I don't know where they're being stored, but if you had them meeting there, they'll be in the gym. Uh, can I have a floor, Paul? You got it. I'll tell you why uh, I'm opposed to taking it to the uh, LCA building, and uh, I, I'm all for the the little school and everything, but. We're looking at additional work for Kim and the staff at, at the town offices of, of getting the, the tables over there. And th this is a perfect setup where it comes in right here. We vote outside. The, the food concession is outside. Everybody is in here and they're sitting down and it's quiet. I can remember when we had the, the town meetings back at the LCA school that we had the town meeting up front and Russ Lanfer and I were shooting deer out back. You know, everybody seems to conjugate the food tables and stuff. And I don't know how many times, and I bet you people here like Jack and, excuse me, Jack, the older people in here can, <laughs> can remember that the moderator would have to stop the meeting and ask the crowd to, to, uh, to calm down so you can hear them. Now we have a hard enough time hearing right in here when everything is quiet. And, and over there it, it would be, Tremendous, so I don't care which way it goes, but that's just my concerns. So if you didn't hear that, or stated that there's better parking here. And she's, she, she walks over to school. Any other comments? Up in the back. I'm curious, uh, what is a good reason to go over there? Because I haven't heard any good reasons to do it. Well, the sound check. 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 I got a motion to call the question. Wait, yeah. All right. We'll acquiesce. We're here. There's no further discussion. I'll call the question. Aura? Well, Bruce, I hear what you're saying, and I have to say that because of the last few years since the building has been made, there's been so many security measures put in. I have not seen the building at all. It's, it's not as easy or friendly for people to get there. I wonder if maybe there would be a, at least a time when the school might clearly open up to the community to be able to see what's been put in there. Maybe they have not had it. They have opened up the event. 
I have also been a proponent of changing it. And uh, I am hearing uh, the differences I'm hearing where I know I have helped put up those voting booths and take them down and carry them because we have a lot of people working every time we're voting. And, um, and I think it's worth trying. It doesn't have to be forever. Let's, let's see what it's like over there. And isn't it a wonderful thing? If the speaker has to flag people down because we're talking yes. about our town. That's right. So let's let's go over there for a little bit, at least. Let's try. Maryland's over by the way. So I'm gonna call the question. Shall the High Park Annual Town Meeting be held at the High Park Elementary School Future Years? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed? Aye. Aye. Oh boy. We have a division of the house. <laughs> All, I'm gonna ask for a hand count. And I'll need somebody to help me count. All those in favor, raise your hand. Just one hand. <laughs> keep it up. So all those, you can put your hands down now. All those opposed, significant. About two and a half times the number for sure. So we're going to call it no. So uh, Susan, would you like to take the pleasure of introducing our senator and our representative? I think that would be appropriate. We, we have up back, I see our elected officials. Would you gentlemen all please come down? Yeah, yeah, that's the three of you. <laughs> and if you all just want to take a minute and introduce yourself so people, people know who you are and can, uh, we'll, if anybody has a question they want to ask right away or that if you'll be up back for a few minutes because we're almost done and be able to chat with folks. So introduce yourselves and. I'm uh, Matt Hill, uh, grew up in Johnson. I live in Wilkin now and uh, Dan and I are the two uh, state reps. Good morning, I'm Dan Noyce and uh, we also have a town meeting report that we put together that's probably out on the table somewhere there. So, but we'll be here out after. I'm Rich Westman. I'm the senator from the county, um, and I'm glad to be here. Welcome. So as Susan strongly suggested, if you have any comments or concerns that you wish to speak to your representatives about, there's no better time than to do it after this meeting. <laughs> okay. And they'll be here, and uh, perhaps the... Uh, Concessionaires from the sixth grade will be out there to help uh, manage the stomach and the souls at the same time. So take advantage of them. Uh, the sixth grade class is there, uh, trying to earn some money for their annual field trip and uh, appreciation of anyone there that can help support them. They also have a raffle and their donuts are great. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna move on now to article 10. Shall the voters approve, in addition to any Rich, other appropriation? Rich, put it on the stand. Excuse me. 
Shall the voters approve, in addition to any other appropriate appropriations approved in prior articles, a total general fund expenditure amount for the period July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2021. Have we got that final figure, Kim? Well, we'll, we'll just throw this at him. Uh, $2,643,000 of which $2,184,700 shall be raised by property taxes and $458,300 by non-property tax revenue. Motion is approved, made and seconded. Any discussion? If not being none, all those in favor say aye. And those opposed? The eyes clearly have it. You've adopted Article 10. Article 11, shall the voters approve the payment of property taxes to the town treasurer in four equal installments by a Chapter 32, Vermont statute annotated 4792 as listed below with delinquent taxes and assessments have been charged against them, an 8% commission after the fourth installment via Chapter 32, BSA 1674, and interest charges of 1% per month or fraction thereof for the first three months and thereafter, 1.5% per month or fraction thereof from the due date of such tax. Such interest shall be imposed on a fraction of a month as if it were an entire month. And that also via Chapter 32, Vermont Statutes Annotated, number 5136. Payments are due in the hands of the treasurer by 4 p.m. on the following due dates. Only official United States Postal Service cancellation marks will be accepted if postmarked on or before a due date. Again, via Chapter 32, BSA 4773. The first installment to be paid on or before Monday, August 31st in 2020. The second installment on or, behalf, on or before Monday, November 16th, 2020. The third installment to be paid on or before Tuesday, February 16th in the year 2021. And the fourth to be paid on or before Monday the 17th in the year 2021. Motion moved. Second. Do I hear a second? second? And seconded. Any discussion? There being none, I'll call the question then and I'll reserve reading it again. Thank you. All those in favor of Article 11 signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed? You have adopted Article 11. 12, to transact any other business that may legally come before this meeting. Not hearing any, I would call for an adjournment. I would like to make an announcement. Friday night, 7 o'clock, at the Congregational Church, I'll be doing a presentation on our church in Iceland. Anyone interested, come on by, 7 o'clock at church. Try it. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Can I make a quick announcement as well? Please. This is, we as a community have a great need for foster families, and all of our foster homes in our community are full right now. So if anyone is interested in helping out children in need, please call your DCF office, 888-4576. Um, we need foster families, and we need people that can help those children in other ways as well. So please contact us. One other notation I had here for my, uh, was that the Town Energy Committee may want to speak to us today about the Climate Solutions Resolution. Is there anyone here to speak to that? Hello, folks. My name is Denise Green. I know most of you. Um, I've been on the Energy Committee for about four years now, and we help um, residents of the town to lower their electric bills by promoting the programs of Efficiency Vermont and any other programs that will um, help in this cause. And one thing we want to ask folks to do 
is to consider approving the Climate Solutions Resolution. And that is a non-binding resolution that was um, passed in, the, uh, I think, around 44 towns in Vermont over the past two years. And I can read it to you. Um, it, it is here somewhere. <laughs> here it is. OK. It says, whereas extreme and erratic temperatures, increasingly severe storms, a rise in tick-borne diseases and threats to farmers, maple sugar makers, clearly demonstrate, and this doesn't even consider the ski industry or other tourism industries that we rely on in our state, um, demonstrates that climate change is one of the most urgent problems facing our state, nation, and the world. Now, therefore, be it resolved that shall the undersigned voters of the town of Hyde Park urge the state of Vermont to halt any new expanded fossil fuel infrastructure, transmission pipelines, electrical generation plants, and or industrial facilities. Commit to 100% renewable energy by 2030 by all for all people in Vermont with firm interim deadlines and ensure that the transition to renewable energy is fair and equitable for all residents, no harm to marginalized groups or rural communities. Um, then the second part of this is, shall the undersigned voters from the town of Hyde Park request the town to do its part to meet these demands by committing to efforts such as protecting town lands from fossil fuel in infrastructure, denying easements or agreements for any pipelines crossing town lands, weatherizing town buildings and schools, enlisting state support to install rooftop solar on town and school buildings, other initiatives to improve residents' quality of life while helping to reduce overall energy use, encourage landowners, municipalities, and farmers to implement practices that build soil carbon sponge to cool the planet and mitigating flooding and drought, form a town energy committee towards reducing town emissions, which we've already done. So um, should this article pass, a letter shall be sent from the town of Hyde Park to our state representatives and senators, the Speaker of the Vermont House, President Pro Tempore of the Vermont Senate, and the governor, including the count of votes, and support to support or oppose this article. So um, I would just like to speak as a town resident. I know that this uh, there was a um, bill that passed the House recently and it set some guidelines for 70% renewables by 2050. And it has been introduced into the Senate, I believe. I may be wrong about that. Um, but it's just not enough, in my opinion. And I hope you will agree with me. We're seeing uh, some catastrophic um, weather and other um, things happening in this world that are accelerating climate change. My daughter just produced a film in Borneo on the deforestation of Borneo for the palm oil industry, and it's devastating. A huge carbon sink on that piece of, of um, rainforest and the burning of the uh, rainforest down in um, Amazon is critical right now. The fires have been put out, but there are many more fires are being set. And this is all due to um, severe droughts. We know there's fires over in Australia that caused devastation there. And so severe droughts, severe flooding, heavy rain events all stand to um, drastically change our state agriculture, our state forests, our state wildlife, the way we do live here in Vermont. So I urge you to please adopt this resolution, send it off to the state, and show our state that we as a town believe that we can do better than 70% by 2050. And we really need to. OK? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to make a, a comment uh, before closing. Um, Susan mentioned earlier that Kim had started this year an outreach for uh, 
free voting, absentee ballots, and registration, all off-site. And she came to the, uh, and was invited to come to the Sterling View Community uh, Center at their house there, and it was a tremendous success. So new people registered, new people had moved into the community of Hyde Park, uh, absentee ballots were picked up. People, uh, and one lady took, took, the, took the ballot home, the absentee ballot, and had her son, husband fill it out and sign it. He was very ill, <laughs> and she trotted right back with it to complete it, so it was done. Um, but these outreach uh, voting capabilities and registration and absentee ballots will be done in the future. Kim plans on doing them at every opportunity that, that we can here in Hyde Park. Um, so that's a big plus for us here. You know, extra work involved, but the satisfaction's overwhelming. Um, and we're adding to the, to the people and the registrants of the taxpayers and the voters here in the community at the same time. So I just thought I'd mention that to you. Any further discussion here today? Any comments? The Energy Committee just asked for a I didn't hear that, did she? Excuse me. So, so I believe <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> I believe the Energy Committee just proposed a resolution that we ignored. Then that's all those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. You certainly may. Paul, can we legally vote on that, seeing it wasn't warned? It's only a resolution, and that's the only thing that'll be done. It's not doing anything purposely. It's not anything that would be taken that would be done. John Rolater, still spelled with an H. Um, <clears throat> I know this is a non-binding resolution, but my concerns, just having heard this for the first time, um, I picked up on a prohibition against electrical generation and industry, which concerns me, because even prohibiting industry within our own state or communities is just pushing the problem into someone else's backyard unless we deal with our own consumptions. Um, also, I am concerned with the apparent prohibition against pipelines, as if a pipeline itself is some form of evil, as opposed to perhaps hundreds of trucks driving up and down our roads every day delivering propane and fuel oil. So I think that there are certain elements of this that uh, should be at least addressed or perhaps modified before we take this vote. I'm also concerned that out of 251 towns in this state, only 44 have passed it. That's less than 20%. Thank you. Any other comments, discussion? I'll call a question. And all those in favor of the resolution, signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed? No. I hear a call for division of the House. All those in favor of the resolution, raise your hand. We'll ask for a count. You can put your hands down now, thank you. All those not in favor?
applaud. You can put your hands down now, thank you. So, so the way we see it here and concur is uh, in favor, 30, not in favor, 45. So the resolution isn't, uh, doesn't stand. Any other business that you wish to transact here today, yes? Right. In the future, if people would like to bring forth um, resolutions and things for the town to vote on, that um, rather than have it read to us, maybe, you know, and I understand we're not going to be cutting trees down with this uh, suggestion, but print it out so all of us can see it. I understand it's not important here, but it would have been very helpful as I walked in to have been handed that so I could have read it. Thank you. <clears throat> yes? Former educator, I'd like to make a recommendation to our uh, elementary school that they uh, have an open house again. I missed the last one because I was busy doing something else, and I've been very active in the community, and I think there are several of us who'd like to go over and see physically the building and be able to walk around and visit and that sort of thing. Thank you, Everett. We're going to ready to adjourn. Do I hear a motion? Motion adjourned. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you for coming.